My top 10 tools for guitar building. I've been asked this question a million times and I'm finally going to make a video. You don't need to surround yourself with as many tools and fripperies as I have. I have an addictive personality and low self-control, specifically where tools are concerned. You don't need them all though. Burn it. Ha <laughs> ha, yay! Tools that we're going to assume that you already have. Your grandmother already has these tools, even if you don't. So, well, handsaw. You're gonna to need to cut wood. You, you just are, it's, in fact, it's the most fun part of the job, uh, a lot of people think. Variety of hammers. A variety of screwdrivers. Make sure you use the correct sized screwdriver for what the screw that you're driving into the guitar. There are a few things worse than snapping off a screw inside of a guitar. At that point, you need a specialist tool and you're gonna have to make it. Masking tape and super glue. Go to your local post office. Uh, this is ancillary almost. The same thing goes for a Sharpie and a pencil. I use the Graph Tech. Graph Gear 1000, there we go, by Pentel. I used it so much that the, the, the lettering has been worn off. Uh, I absolutely love that pencil. I've got the 0.5 and the 0.9 millimeter lead. 0.9 is better for, for wood, etc. Sharpies, we use them all the time. A ruler, a pair of scissors, rasps and files. Seriously, rulers, going back to that, your center line is the the center of your world. It is the, the most important thing. You lose that and life gets squiffy quickly. There are probably more tools that you would come across and say, oh, I could do with X, but most of these are covered. I'm fairly sure that I could build a guitar from scratch with that as a basis from which to work. Now, we then move on to more conventional tools that, again, you probably have or know somebody who does have these. And uh, I'm very, very lucky to work with Triton Power Tools. Uh, they both support the channel, but I've been using them uh, for many, many, many years. I have been asked what my the one tool that I'm not prepared to build a guitar without would be. I've always said, oh, random orbital sander. I'm gonna break that down even further. And it's just a sanding machine. This is a quarter pad sander by Triton. It's a budget tool, they're about 40 pounds. And yes, I can sand by hand an entire guitar down and it would be perfectly fine. But that much sanding is soul destroying. So I tend to avoid it. Moving on from a sanding machine of some sort, I'm going to go to a hand drill. It does not have to be a power drill although that does make life a lot easier. There are an infinite, that's a lie. We all know it's a lie. Why do we say there are an infinite amount of holes to drill in the guitar? There are a lot of holes to drill in a guitar and having an accurate, powerful drill with which to do that is a must. This also assumes that you buy the correct drill bits. If you don't have a good quality drill bit, even if you only buy the single drill bit for the size you need instead of spending hundreds of pounds on a good set, not having a good drill bit can just destroy an entire build in short order. The same thing goes for a router. Now, there are ways to avoid using a power drill, for example. You can use a, a, a hand power drill. That's absolutely fine. Uh, it's a bit more fiddly and a little bit less stable in some cases. Uh, the same thing goes with the router. You can avoid using a router. And if you are only working in your, I don't know, in, 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 in a, a bed sit or something like that, and you've got neighbors on all sides, uh, maybe that's not ideal for you. And you can, at a great length, use a hand drill to drill out the waste and then chisels, etc. Um, but it's not fun. So this is why the router is in this. Uh, a router with two or three good cutters, uh, you're done. Now the cutters I would say are uh, bearing cutters with the bearing on the shaft and uh, one relatively deep one, say uh, an inch and a half deep or 
30, 35 millimeters deep, and that will do the outside of the, of the guitar around the templates, etc. And you will also then need a, a half inch deep uh, bearing cutter. Those tend to be on a quarter inch shaft, and that would be for all of your pickups and control cavities, etc. Now, again, I've been using this Triton router for the last I'm not sure, 12 or 15 years even, and I absolutely love them. There are other alternatives out there if you, uh, if you fancy. Conventional tools, one, two, three, four. <clears throat> I've actually been thinking about this for a long time, and there are people who do not think that you need a chisel, or for that matter, matter <laughs> a hand plane. Uh, in order to build a guitar, and that's fine. Those people also tend to have access to CNC machines and massive belt sanders and <clears throat> and big jointers, where which means that you don't necessarily, you know, you can do a body joint on a good quality ten thousand pound surface planer. Uh, if you don't have that then honestly, a good sharp chisel, I'd say, I would say at a minimum a half inch, a quarter inch, and maybe an inch. With those three, you can do pretty much anything that you need to do with a chisel apart from inlay work. And a hand plane or two. Now, these conventional tools, these things mean that very quietly, very rapidly, once you've learned how to use them, you can make pretty much anything, and I'm not just talking about guitars. With this range of tools, you could do pretty much anything you could ever think of, from a rocking chair to a picnic bench, to a guitar, to probably a house. Fight me. Okay, so uh, now, uh, conventional tools with, with the hand planes, I would say you don't have to have all of the planes in the world. I have to have all of the planes in the world, but I'm a special case. Emphasis on the word, special. <laughs> Interpret that as you will. Uh, my favorite is a number three. It's, it's this size, it's relatively small. I can do most things that I could do with a block plane with a number three. Uh, and you will need a number six or a seven for, for joints. Well, not need, you could do with, uh, but even, only having a single number three or a number four size, depending on how big your hands are, will make your life so much easier. These, this is from jointing the body, from jointing the tops, from surfacing the, the lumber down. I'm going to assume that many people watching this are building in a limited space. Um, they're working on a kitchen table and uh, they will be buying the timber for the guitar as much as possible pre-dimensioned. Uh, but there's always going to be, oh, the fretboard came and it's eight millimeters instead of the six millimeters or seven millimeters that the, uh, the supplier told me. And you need to radius the fingerboard anyway. That is when a hand plane of any size is your best friend. This is, this is where I'm cheating a little bit. You all know that I, I own Crimson Guitars and we manufacture um, specialist guitar building tools. The temptation is to say, you need all of it. And again, it's about saving time. Yes, every tool has a purpose. When it comes down to it, if you have a hammer, you can put your frets in. I didn't use a dead blow fretting hammer for the first 10 years of my, of my life. I mean, I had a, I'd found at a car boot sale a planishing hammer, a metal workers tool, which actually was worth more than <laughs> fretting hammers are. But um, yeah, I, I used that, I polished up the head and that's what I used to put my frets in. It wasn't quite as good, wasn't quite as comfortable um, to use. It was the wrong size really, but it worked. So what I'm trying to say is all of these tools that we make will make your life easier and especially if you're you know, building in what limited time you have, if you're, you have a full-time job and, and family and all of that jazz, you wanna speed it up. However, this is about the basics and the basics is about fret work almost entirely. If you cannot get a pre-slotted fretboard, and this, this tool nearly didn't make it, but I'm gonna assume that you, you want to do a fan fret, for example, or something of that ilk, and you have to have 
a fret slotting saw. Uh, there are some conventional saws that have the right kerf, uh, 0.022 of an inch. It's a bit of a crapshoot there, and uh, I, I would just say get a tool that is designed and sold specifically as a fret slotting saw. Um, you can do this by hand. You can, using the conventional rulers and a good quality pencil and uh, online fret slotting calculators, you can do this. Anybody can build a guitar. So that being said, once you've cut your, frets, your fret slots, you'll use a conventional hammer to put the frets in and you need to level, crown and polish them. Now, the very first thing that you would do is take a notched straight edge and the notches fit over the frets. Uh, our notch straight edge fits over a multitude of different, uh, of different scale lengths and what this allows you to do is read the neck itself rather than what the frets are doing. For years and in some of my earlier videos you would have seen me using a conventional straight edge. I have the same straight edge here and I would put that on top of the frets and then eyeball the, the distance between the bottom of the straight edge and the fretboard. And, and I, I cringe to think about it. And I'd eyeball it and say, yeah, that looks straight enough. And then I would use a leveling file to level the frets. With a notch straight edge, you actually adjust with your Allen keys, that are another one of the things that uh, your, your grandmother will probably have. Um, you will then adjust your truss rod, make sure that the neck itself is absolutely perfectly flat because the frets will not be. Uh, this also obviously goes for, for repair. Um, you have to have a flat surface with which to start. Okay, so not straight edge helps you read that. You set your neck straight and then you move on to leveling the frets. Find yourself your Sharpie, mark over the fret slots, or the frets, sorry. And then you will either use a, a leveling beam, which is, it's perfectly flat. Uh, it should be perfectly flat. There are some people selling budget tools out there where they will find a piece of anodized aluminium, anodized. Uh, extruded aluminium, there we go, or they will use a, um, a spirit level, for example. These, these things are not perfectly flat. Um, they are flat, they're flattish, but there is no guarantee that they are perfectly flat. And uh, I used to think that that was a nuance and unnecessary. And I'm afraid you really, and I'm biased here, and I know I'm biased here, but you really, really, really get what you pay for. It, it, it is true in, in cars, it is true in shoes, it is true for tools. Um, you, you really do. Even if you limit what you buy to just this list, make sure you get the best that you can. Uh, so a leveling beam, or a fret leveling file will then level the frets. And at that point, you need a fret rocker. I didn't use these for years, I didn't see the point. But when, once you have leveled the frets, the fret rocker allows you to find out if you have any issues. Uh, now, an issue that comes up on repairs a lot of the time is that you'll have a fret that wasn't properly seated in the first place. Um, and this also actually goes for first time builds. Your slot might not have been deep enough, etc. And as you push the fret leveling beam over the fret, it pushes it down. And then because it's not seated, it just lifts again. With the fret rocker, you hold it over three frets. There's five sides, so it goes all the way uh, down the fretboard and even to uh, mandolin sizes, etc. Uh, you hold the fret rocker over three frets and if there's a rock you'll know that you've got a high fret or a low fret somewhere and it allows you to diagnose issues, find where the problem is and then figure out what you need to do to fix it. I use the fret rocker before I do anything on a repair or on a, on, or on a fret level crown and polish on something that uh, uh, has been around for a while and uh, at this stage check it see what you need to do. If you've got a bum fret or two, you might need to hammer it in a bit, you might need to add glue, um, etc. At this point, it's kind of where I'm cheating. Uh, I said 
five essential specialist guitar building tools and one of those five is this pair of files. A fret crowning file and a fret end dressing file. Um, I had to do it, I had to. It's, it, they're, they're fret files. Okay, now with a proper fret crowning file you will then be able to put the, the crown on and get your intonation point absolutely spot on. Uh, we would say about half a millimeter of untouched material on the top of the fret. Please watch the tutorials for this. And the ends of the frets, it's something that so many people discount or half forget about. The ends of the frets are so important. This is the playing surface. This is the user interface. And if it's crap, you're not gonna wanna play the guitar. Uh, going back to hand planes, it's exactly the same thing. If you've got a plane that is not set up properly and is not fun to use, you're not going to want to use it. If you've got a guitar that isn't set up properly and isn't fun to play, you're not going to want to use that. So if, for example, with planes and chisels, if you're having trouble using it, think about how much I love using these tools. and watch a, t a tutorial somewhere, it doesn't have to be one of mine, about how to set up the plane and how to get the best out of it. Because even the cheapest plane can be used and can be adjusted to, to work properly. Um, now the same goes with the crowning files, etc, etc, etc. If it's not working for you, figure out what the issue is. It might be the tool isn't good enough, it might be the tool isn't set up properly enough, or you need to just adjust your technique. Um, all of this should be fun. It should not be a struggle. <sighs> okay, now there's one other specialist tool and again, it's uh, file based. And again, it's to do with the user interface and that is a set of nut slotting files. There are budget versions available and they do the job okay. Uh, we have a, a very, very nice set of Crimson Guitars that is utterly gauged and flat sided so they don't widen the, the nut slots out and potentially move them sideways as you're, as you're filing. Um, I'm seriously considering adding, adding a budget set to the list just to make life a little bit easier for people working on a budget. Um, and in fact that is a reason why I want to do a hand tool only build or a limited tool build. Perhaps I could limit it to what's on the bench, let me know. Um, but there we go. These are, in my mind, the essential tools for building a guitar from scratch at home. There are alternatives. There are alternatives. You don't have to use sandpaper. You could use a scraper. You don't have to sand the guitar at all. You could etch it and engrave it if you want. Um, you, you don't have to have a router. You can drill the holes and use a chisel. You don't have, to, you could use a a router plane, for example. Uh, you don't have to use a powered drill. You could use uh, a pillar drill for a lot of that stuff if you have a, a workshop or access to one, or you could use a, a, a vintage hand drill, uh, Miller's Falls, etc. Go to vintagetoolshop.com, that's my other company. I've got lots of these things, and, uh, and they're fantastic, and I love using them. Uh, instead of a sander, you could use scrapers, or you could just use a sanding block and sandpaper and spend two days sanding a guitar. Yay! Uh, but this, this, is, this is my line. The, these are the tools that, uh, uh, that I pretty much wouldn't, I really wouldn't enjoy my job as much without this collection. Uh, let me know in the comments below what your list of tools would be. What is the ideal setup for a budget workshop? What is the ideal setup for a, a space limited workshop with, you know, without a budget? Um, you might have 10,000 pounds to spend and live in a one bedroom flat in Manhattan, I don't know, um, and want to build guitars. I've seen people making furniture out of a literal closet and you shove it full of tools and you get everything you need and want and make furniture or guitars or just dust, the choice is yours.
Thank you for watching. Please check out crimsonguitars.com. Please check out vintagetoolshop.com since we're talking about tools. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Uh, please consider supporting us on Patreon as well. There are extra videos and uh, Q&As and all sorts of stuff going on there. And I personally would really, really appreciate your support. Most importantly, click like, subscribe, and I read every single comment and reply to as many of them as I possibly can. So let me know what you think of this and uh, what your tools would be. I see you soon. Goodbye. For some reason, I'm getting palpitations here. I'm, I'm sort of getting all excited about, well, tools. Oh, yes! Honorable mention! Ha <laughs> ha! Specialist tool. One last thing. Uh, and, and this is ancillary to everything else. You don't have to have a Japanese saw rasp. You don't have to have a Japanese saw rasp in your life. But by golly, you really should. Um, check them out, they're relatively inexpensive. I have gone through, I think, three in the last 20 years, and the only real reason is because I, well, we sell them, so I have them coming through quite regularly. They last forever. With this, you can carve a neck in 20 minutes. With uh, a chisel and a plane, or a traditional file or rasp, you can spend two or three or four days. Uh, my first guitar necks took days to carve, and it was not fun. This, this should be fun. So, yeah, Japanese saw rasp, tool number 11. <laughs> See you soon. I'm standing here shooting B-roll, looking at the router, and I realize that as well as router bits, you have to have uh, hearing protection of some sort. I use the Isotunes, uh, well, I use Isotunes all the time, you know I do, I love it. Crimson 10 gets you 10 quid off. Um, and uh, yeah, there we go. I listen to my music as well at the same time. Can't believe I forgot that. I've been planning this, writing notes about this video for weeks. Anyway, here we go.